To dispoil any rumors, first off, today, small children are learning about bullying. Today, they are learning what a good touch is versus a bad touch. They learn about health and safety. Our children learn about consent. Our children learn about pregnancies and STD preventions. Representative, is it your intent to promote health, wellness, and healthy relationships for our youth from kindergarten through 12th grade? It is the intention to continue to promote education and wellness that are accurately, uh, ac medically accurate and age appropriate. So it's to promote health, wellness, and healthy relationships for our youth kindergarten through 12th. Yes. Thank you. So we actually agree on something. Thank you. We have some common ground. Where we disagree is that the bill goes far beyond health, wellness, and safety for our kiddos. Everyone wants our, health, our youth to be educated. We want our youth to be safe and protected. But this bill, like so many others in this House, goes way too far. As asked in committee of you, Six years ago, I think that was the date we figured out, you sponsored and passed what was called a comprehensive sex ed bill for grades 6 to 12. Is that correct? Yes. Is this bill a comprehensive expansion to include grades kindergarten through fifth grade? I'm sorry, representatives. Is that a question? Yeah, it was. Is okay. this bill, SB 818, a comprehensive expansion to include kindergarten through fifth grade? We are including K through five, yes. Right, so it's expanding it, okay. It was stated in committee that SB 818 actually does not make significant changes to what was previously passed. This part y'all might want to pay attention to. Many strongly disagree. I do agree that it does expand the original grades of 6 through 12 to include kindergarten through 5th grade. It also expands curriculum, recommending, expands curriculum to recommend discussing sensitive topics starting at 10 years old. Starting at 10 years old. Actually defining sexual intercourse for your 10-year-olds as having sex, in quotes. That can involve the penis and the vagina, or the mouth and the genitals for your 10-year-old, or the penis and the anus for your 10-year-old. It also expands curriculum to allow videos that are actually restricted on YouTube to adults only. I'm not going to get into what that is. That is not true. That is true. That's absolutely true, ma'am. There is a, a recommended reading book that several of us have. It's for 10 and up, and that is literally defined in the book. That is not true. In addition to this is standards, not a curriculum. No, no, no. This bill That's correct. That's correct. Standards, that is correct. Okay, the standards, you. the curriculum will be developed by the standards. This is a recommended book for 10 years old and up. I'll the carry on with my questions. Thank you. Here's the book, 10 and up. The state this is, is a, not recommending any book. No, no, no. But the curriculum has recommended reading, and this is in it. That is not true. It is it true. It is not specified in this bill. No, no, no. It, you're right. It is not specified in this bill. It's that not. is correct, ma'am. That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. In committee. I had asked why the words family life was stricken from the current statute. We were told that the definition of family was defined in the standards. Can you advise where that is? One second.
Representative, I do have the bill with me. On page five, it states, comprehensive, we're removing family life and we are adding comprehensive personal health and safety education and comprehensive sex. Right, how, how does that define family life though? We're not defining family, we're being, we are clarifying and okay. answering questions. How about in the standards? Personal health. I guess I, I should rephrase that. The, the advocates in committee stated that family life was defined in the standards that are going to be used to recommend, going to be used for the curriculum. So where is it defined? Where is family life defined in the standards as was stated in debate in the uh, committee? I, I couldn't find it. Uh, Harris no. and the chair. I'm not sure if that was the debate that I was in, because I know we, we had a number of debates. So Yeah, it, it was just the other day, with, actually. With the reach. Mm -hmm. So maybe afterwards or your, your staff could figure out where that is exactly. That'd be great, because I still don't know. Please verify the National Sex Education Standards is defined to be age-appropriate and medically accurate. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Okay, actually that is not correct. Per the standards on page 11, NSES takes a theory, an intersectionality approach as the guiding principle, and it continues to discuss that on page 12, where it actually goes into more detail about the theoretical framework, stating that an effective, comprehensive sex education is theory driven and focuses on specific behavioral outcomes. Comprehensive sex education is theory driven and focuses on specific behavioral outcomes. As a matter of fact, within the guide, it continues on with 16 points, none of which say medically accurate. Representative, could you bring your remarks to a close? Uh, Representative uh, Hammond. Gives her time. Can you point me in the Can you point to me in the standards where it states the curriculum is to be medically accurate? Two things, Representative. <laughs> okay. Um, in the bill, page twelve, it does state family structure within the bill. Two, we have language that has the word, oh, here it is. We are not mandating the national standards. We are seeking alignment. And any teacher, school district can use the curricula that they deem fit for their school district, okay. along with the parents being able to opt out if it's not what they are proposing for their child. You're kind of moving me ahead on my questions, but I'm more than happy to tackle that one right now. Mm -hmm. If any school wants to teach sex education, they have to choose a, they have to develop a curriculum with the national sex education standards. Is that correct? We are seeking alignment That's with right. standards. Ali so they do if, not have to adopt. If a school chooses to teach sex education, they have to develop a curriculum that aligns with the national sex education standards. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. So can you point to me then in those standards that we have to use to develop curriculum where it states medically accurate? There's a number of experts that put forth these standards. Right, can you show me where that Across. is about that then in the standards? This was a big concern for one of your leaders. Mm -hmm. And it is important uh, that you recognize that they have been researching this for over 30 years. Great. And in that 
medically accurate terminology, and I will give you primary those professionals. I don't need their name. I would just like to see where in the state organizations that is. I don't need the organization. It can be found on page six of the standards. Pardon? It can be found on page six of the standards. Page six of the standards. And we'll confirm on that. Page ten. That's in here. On page ten of the bill. Oh, it's in the bill. I see it in the bill, but it's not in the standards. And it's on page six on the standards. All right. Got our Thank information. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you advise? Um, during, de during debate in committee, one of the leaders asked how age-appropriate was defined by the NC NSES, the standards. It was stated by the advocates that age-appropriateness was in the bill. Can you advise where age-appropriate is defined in the bill? It's in the current bill. It's in the bill, the law that we have now. It's in this bill as well. So where Exactly. Okay. So I'll tell you where it is. It's on it's page on, six. It's on page six. That's right. Adult age and development appropriate means suitable to the particular ages or group of children and adolescents based on the development and cognitive, emotional, and behavioral capacity typical for the age or age group. That's so clear. That's it's so the, clear. It's in the bill, Representative. Yeah, page six. Age and developmentally appropriate. Comprehensive personal health and safety education for pupils kindergarten through fifth grade and comprehensive sexual health education for pupils six through 12. That's how it's defined. Age is not defined as one would think. It's very subjective. Some questions about the standards. Who is, who, what is the National Sex uh, Education Standards? Does Illinoisans develop those standards? Once again, there were three groups that worked. Um, the advocate, Zinga, since Sikas, uh, and the answer were the groups who developed has the standards. His so not Illinoisans? Again, it was advocates for youth, SICUS, and the answer. And they convened a wide range of independent experts in the area of sexuality, public education, public health, child and adolescent medicine and psychology to develop and review these standards. So those are the folks that came together to draft the standards, the advocate groups. Do any of them have uh, political agendas? They were independent experts. Great. Any of them funded by any sort of dark money or organizations with agenda? It's not relevant. We're talking about SB 8. Right, we're to, it's very relevant personal. because they're the ones who are drafting the uh, who are drafting the standards that are going to be the basis for the curriculum for our children, kindergarten through twelfth. I am unaware where these organizations get their funding. Thank you. You have stated that this is not a mandate. You've also Correct. stated that school districts must develop a curriculum that is aligned with the national education standards, national sex ed standards. If the district does not agree with these standards, can they choose another? I'm, I'm going to repeat, I apologize if I'm repeating the That's same okay. thing. The standards are to align with the national right standard. and I just I just said that as well okay <laughs> so sure. but if the district if a district if my home district does not agree with these standards can they choose another standard it must align with the national no, sex education it's not the question. standards can they choose another standard to align with I believe I'm saying they can but I'm not sure if you're not getting it it's the same criteria, and the answer is yes. 
Oh, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. So you're saying that a school district does not have to use the national sex education standards as the standard to develop curriculum for kindergarten through 12th grade? They can choose a different standard? Schools may choose and adapt the age and development appropriate, medically correct, complete, culturally appropriate, inclusive, and trauma-informed, comprehensive personal health and safety, and comprehensive sex health education curriculum that meets the specifics of the needs of their district and community. This is on page 15 yes, of the bill. Yes, but can they use another standard, or does it have to be the national sex education standards that they align with? Is it them or none? We are aligning with the national Is it national them standards. or none? Is it NSES or none? I'm sorry? Is it those standards, the national sex education standards or none? Yes. Yes. Yes what, please? Yes, it's those standards. It I'm has understand. to be them or nothing, correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So to confirm then, the curriculum must align with the national standards or nothing. So in reality, this really is a mandate. All or nothing, and one must opt out compared to opt-in. Unfortunately, Rep curriculum is not often known to parents, grandparents, caregivers. They don't dig in, unfortunately. I've heard from many of my educators, parents, that an opt-in would be more transparent and bring forward the newly developed curriculum. Would you be willing to amend this bill to have an opt-in compared to an opt-out? Representative, this, we already have the teach the standards, excuse me, we already teach sex ed in our schools. The parents can already opt out. Right, this is new. So can we change the, would you be willing to change it to an opt-in and compare it to an opt-out? No. Why not? This is, that, this is this bill. Maybe you want to present a bill that has that in it? <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so you state that this instruction has an opt-out option for parents. However, is it the intent of the bill for parents to have an option to opt out where it concerns diseases concerning STDs or any other health-related diseases, non-sexually related? Parents, as stated, and this is current, parents may opt out of any portion of the curricula that is presented okay. to them by the district. But this bill changes that. Representative, could you bring your remarks to a close? I'm, you're probably not going to have a whole lot from other speakers, I would think. So if you could indulge me, sir. Five, five more minutes, would that satisfy you? So let me repeat that. This bill does indeed change that. The opt-out option for parents, however, it is, is it the intent, which I don't think it is, for the bill for parents to have an option to opt out where it concerns diseases, whether that's in the context of STDs or any other health-related diseases? It is. So, so it's your intent that they can opt out for that instruction. In the bill, on page 27, lines 5 and 6, the bill repeals section 27-11, which takes away the option for parents to opt out concerning diseases sex education related or otherwise. It repeals the entire section. That was a concern of a constituent who tried for months to have that complaint come forward. Actually even tried to get into the committee the other day. For religious reasons, this, re this repeal changes that. They will not have that option to opt out. Would you be consider would you consider, because that is not your intent, would you consider to not repeal that section? This is only on diseases. The way the school code is written, it is sexual in relation or otherwise. As 
as I'm reading it, it reduces the sexual activities, sexual transmission diseases, and prenatal pregnancy. I'm just talking about that line on 5 and 6, repealing section 27 and dash 11. That's the only piece I'm thinking of right now. It just repeals it. It does. Right. So that, so that does not allow a parent to opt out. When like it comes disease of instructions. Instructions of diseases only. There are some religions in Illinois that do not want their children to be, they want to be able to opt out of learning about STDs or any other diseases, and this repeals that. You state that's not your intent, so I'm asking if you'd be willing to consider changing that. In the future, we can have that conversation. So their religion doesn't matter. Would you agree that we have a teacher shortage in Illinois? Where is this going? Do you agree that we have a teacher shortage in Illinois? I really don't know. Okay. But I bless. Well, yes. I'll say we have a teacher shortage in Illinois. So to be clear, our teachers oh, and our facilitators a lot of us downstate don't have teachers in a lot of our classrooms, and we're actually using facilitators in a lot of our schools. They're not professional sex ed educators like we had speak in committee. So we're going to have teachers and or facilitators teaching this curriculum that aligns with the standards compared to a professional sex ed educator who was noted by, as your witness in committee, that they're trained to be thoughtful, deliberate for age appropriateness, familiar with the theoretical framework as outlined in SES. This is way too much to be asking for our teachers to do. Many have reached out to me and others, and they do not want to be having these conversations. Were you aware that in the standards there is a note stating for educators that there are asterisks placed throughout to inform educators that they may want to include a trigger warning when teaching? Can you imagine? Our teachers are given asterisks throughout their, their manual to, to make sure the kids know they have a trigger warning possibly coming. I won't even make the answer. It's there. Page 10. Look it up. Proceed. So we're talking about youth exploring on the internet about sex education and saying that's not the most ideal place. I want to show in the bill on page 11, it states, course material and instruction shall provide information to help students safely use the internet, including social media, dating or relationship websites or applications and texting. So now we're going to show our youth how to get on dating websites. Stellar. Also on page 13 of the standards, the guide also encourages the use of technology, recognizing the significant role that technology actually plays. Before I close, I want to read something from a parent, and many of you are parents in this room. I would say, this is a quote, I would say first and foremost, it undermines my ability to be a parent to my child. The government is taking my right as a parent, oh, to, taking my right as a parent away to have those conversations with my kids and for my kids to learn that I am there to ask questions. That teacher will not always be there for them, but I will. Concerning my kids, my attention is focused on them one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to have one teacher to administer this difficult and confusing topic for 30 kids at a time. There is no way that one teacher and a cartoon book can replace the attention of a parent. We do not mandate the book. We never intended for the thought process that you're going through. However, it is important to note that the examples that we're putting in the legislation to bring forth understanding. 
We know that our young people are finding information that is not age appropriate, that is not medically correct within our society norms. I'm, I'm sorry are, to cut you off, Representative. I appreciate you. I got you. I appreciate you. To the bill. We're here to represent our kids. SB 818 is much more than another curriculum mandate. These are our kids. Our kids. These young people that are our future, I wish we could stop pretending that we're here to, to help and support the most vulnerable, to support our children. Let's be honest and admit, admit that the advocates are pushing for this. We don't need to teach our youth how to properly use the internet to set them up to be victimized by perverts and human traffickers. The goal of sex education is to help young people grow into healthier sexual relationships and healthier adults. SB 818 is not that. It is not age appropriate. It is sexually charged, and in some cases, it's not medically accurate. And it takes away local control, as schools will have to follow the national standards. I strongly, I strongly urge the body to represent your districts, support your constituents, honor the innocence and humanity of our youth, of our young people, Speaker, if the bill receives the requisite number of votes, I ask for a verification, and I strongly beg all of you to vote no. Representative McCombie has requested a verification. Uh, we're going to go now. There are many members who wish to speak on this topic. We are going to go to the five-minute timer. We'll stay on it. There will be no time sharing. Everyone will have five minutes to please state your opinion. Next speaker is Representative Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? She indicates she'll yield. Representative, could you tell me who has certified these as national standards? As mentioned, there's three groups, the Advocate of Youth, SECUS, and the Answers, and a wide range of independent experts. Are, are, in any, the area. Of them, are any of them governmental agencies? There are independent experts, as mentioned, and I'd like to complete my answer so you can understand, hopefully, the bill a little better. So thank you. Representative, I appreciate that, but I have quite a few questions and four minutes left, and I got mm -hmm. one answer in one minute, so I'm going to be speedy. Are we aligning these with any specific addition of the national standards, or is it going to be whatever the current addition is? It's aligning with the national standards that was created by the three national organizations yes, that I mentioned. Yes, but we're on the second edition now. Does it tie it to any specific edition of the national standards? Yes, as the national sex education standards are updated, the State Board of Education shall update these learning standards. Okay, so it's not tied to the edition now. It's going to change over time. I have one more question, and then I will go to the bill. Is it your is updated on a regular? Yes, they will be updated. I'm, I believe that's true as well. Is this in alignment with any uh, agency? Right? Did the CDC say these are the guidelines? Real any quick. Go governmental agency that certified these as the national standards? ISB will develop and update the guidelines for the Thank you. Mr. Speaker, to the bill. We debated a bill the other day that I opposed that took the principal and teacher mentoring programs out of what the other side characterized as groups, independent groups, and gave them to ISB because they wanted there to be control at the state level of what that program would be. We're doing the opposite in this, but it's not on teacher and principal mentoring. It's on sex education for elementary kids. We're giving that right to an independent group at the national level and giving them the authority to change these standards at any given moment. No input from teachers, no input from parents. Independent groups, not accountable to anyone. 
not accountable to anyone. In their own standards, in addition to, which is what we were on, it says that the standards will address ever-evolving learning needs of students, including as it relates to emerging topics on sex and sex education. So when you're voting today, you've heard about some of the wildly inappropriate for that age topics that will be covered. You don't even know what these are going to be in five, ten years. And guess what? It doesn't matter because it's still going to be the standard in our schools. If you are concerned about, like you were a couple days ago, delegating responsibilities from groups and giving it to the state so there's more oversight, please be consistent when it comes to teaching these topics to our children. This is a, this is something that. A lot of you are going to say, "Well, your side's just backwards on this, so of course we're going to vote yes." But think about the ten-year-old in your life, and look at these standards, or the ten-year-old that's one year now. What are these standards going to look like when they're nine years nine years older? We are delegating all authority to an unaccountable national group that could change these standards at any given moment with no check. At the state level or at the school level, please vote no. Representative Morrison. Thank you,、uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to go straight to the bill.、Um, we hear on this floor often words like evidence-based, and we want to know what the efficacy of certain policies are. In 2016, the Obama administration reported. On comprehensive sex education programs provided by Planned Parenthood in the Seattle area, and they also took a look at the Chicago Public Schools comprehensive sex ed program. And these were the Obama, Obama administration's findings. This is from the Health and Human Services Office of Adolescent Health. And what they found was, after each of these、uh, programs spent, had spent four million dollars, they found. That in the Seattle program, females reported being pregnant at higher rates than females receiving the alternative program. And by the way, what they looked at was a curriculum that would abide by the standards that we're discussing in this bill. In the Chicago Public School program, after nine months of study, ninth graders were found to be just as likely.、Um, To not have, sorry, to have sex without a condom.、Um, let me read directly here. After offering the nine-month program, ninth graders in health classes, they found that youth were just as likely as youth receiving the standard health curriculum to have sex, and to have sex without a condom. And so, what we're seeing here, if you want to just go on the evidence, the study, this is a failed program, and I ask for a no vote. Representative Ann Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the sponsor yield?、Uh, she she indicates she will yield. So, Representative, there's been a lot of talk about some book. Everyone's been raving around this book. Is there anything in the law that provides a certain book be used for the sex ed、uh, programming? No, Representative. So, is there any particular、um, language in the bill that provides? A strict、uh, curriculum that needs to be provided for any particular school. No, Representative. This is a standards piece of legislation. Okay, so we're talking about guidance. We're talking about guidance, which I'm guessing refers to the medically accurate、uh, documents and、um, programming that health experts have developed. Correct. That is correct. So,、um, kind of on that note. Under this legislation, will local school districts be able to have the ability to set the curriculum and choose the textbooks that they would like to utilize for this program? That is correct. Okay. And to clarify, the opt-out is available just the same as it was before this proposal. That is correct, Representative. Okay. Thank you. To the bill,、um, looking at some of the arguments against, it just doesn't make sense to me. We are basing sex education on
uh, medically accurate information, evidence-based on uh, what health experts have decided is appropriate for children to learn about sex ed. And it's hard to imagine why anyone would think our children should not learn about sex education in school, but rather should refer to the internet or Google to determine what uh, sex is or what their questions are and get them answered there. So right now, if you Google any of these terms related to sex education, you're gonna get a lot more explicit information than anything would be provided in a curriculum. So I think that's important to keep in mind. A few other quick points. A few years ago, you may recall that I worked on a bill that provided for consent to be taught as part of sex education. Again, age appropriate. And that's a theme you'll find throughout any uh, legislation pertaining to sex education. So what's appropriate for someone in fifth grade is very different for, than someone in 12th grade. So when we did the consent legislation, I thought it was important to uh, point out the nexus between consent, sex education, and relationships for kids. Kids have relationships when they're in first and second grade, but the relationships change and evolve quite a bit by the time they get to 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. A theme that we need to keep consistent are things like consent and are things like what's medically appropriate. Personal health and safety goes hand in hand with sexual health education. Data shows, and there's extensive evidence, that school-based programs have resulted in students gaining improved knowledge and better attitudes relating to dating violence and interpersonal violence. Where else are these kids going to get this information? These include things like reducing rape myths, victim blaming, and sexist attitudes when it comes to relationships, things I would hope we all want for our children, and things they're just not going to learn on their own. Senate Bill 818 is a critical update to the sex ed law that we've been working for years to improve and hopefully provide more complete, medically accurate information to our kids. Just ask yourself, where else are they going to get this information? not hopefully the internet. So I would again uh, thank the sponsor for bringing this critical update to the floor today and uh, urge an I vote. Thank you. Representative Niemerg. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'll uh, go straight to the bill. Um, over the last few days, I've had an opportunity to, uh, to research uh, Senate Bill 818. Um, and the more I looked into it, the more I researched it, um, Quite frankly, the angrier I became because I have a two-year-old little girl who's getting ready to turn three in June, and I have a six, uh, six-year-old son who just uh, finished up kindergarten, and they are my world, they are my life. And to think that our schools could be teaching something like this to my daughter or my son is infuriating. The National Sex Education Standards that were pointed out in previous debate are going to be used when it comes to formulating this curriculum. And this curriculum will have detrimental impact on our children. Now, when my children grow up and they're looking, hey, what did dad do on the house floor? I've got a whole thing here. I've got the book here with, with, with what happens. And this, this book can be used. This is, this is a part of the, the curriculum that can be used. I want them to look back and say, wow, Dad, you, we are proud of you. You never lost your cool. You kept things in perspective, and we're proud. So I'm not going to quote what's in this book. I'm not going to quote what's in the National Sex Education Standards because I'm above that. My children are above that. You all should be above that. But you want this taught to our children, our kindergartners, our fifth graders, our sixth graders. It's atrocious. Folks, Think about your kids. Think about their future. Think about whether or not you want to co-parent with the government and that should be a part of your life. Let me be clear, I will not co-parent with the government. This goes well beyond acceptable health and safety standards. Think of your children, folks, please. I urge a no vote, thank you. Representative Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the bill, please, if I may. Um, friends, I'm a grandpa, more specifically a papa, and very proud of it. I have two full-grown children and five grandchildren, four months, a little girl, 
three years, seven years, and nine years, and they have all have much more energy than I do. However, Senate Bill 818 is not age appropriate. I move for no vote. Thank you. Representative Ramirez. Hi. Does the speak does the sponsor yield? She yields. Representative, is it true that Isby is neutral on the bill? Yes. Is it true that the Associate of School Boards is also neutral on the bill? That is correct. Is it true that the Principals Association is neutral on the bill? Yes. So who is the remaining opposition? The Illinois Right of Life Action and the Illinois Family Institute, Institute and the Pro-Life Family Alliance. So you're telling me that the educators Certainly, you just went through some of those here. They are not opposed to the bill. That is correct. To the bill. Educators don't oppose the bill. There are individuals concerned with the bill, and it seems to me they're concerned with the bill among some of the things that a few folks have said here and there. Really, the acknowledging of identity of all students and I find that highly problematic. It is incredibly important for our children to have the ability to get the education they need. And I, I've been reading through all the pages and, and the stuff on the legislation, and I see over and over that it is clear that any parent can opt out. Is that correct? That is correct. Colleagues, this is extremely important. We have to make sure that our children, regardless of their identity, are recognized. This bill is a good bill, and I urge and I vote. Representative West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill, I'm very aware of the underlying current that gives many people great pause when it comes to this legislation. It's that word sex, a word that is stigmatized. Many of us raised to understand that it should be saved for marriage. I grew up with that rule. Nothing wrong with that rule. It's also safe to say that there's people in here in this chamber who also grew up with that rule and broke that rule to each their own. There's also people in this very chamber if I may be so bold, who was forced, forced to break that rule. And the rest of us have heard stories from loved ones, from children, who had the personal experience of being forced to break that rule. When that happens, other currents, other words are brought to light. Shame, emptiness, guilt, confusion. When this happens, one is instantly stripped from their unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and it takes resources, it takes support to reclaim those rights. And if they don't have those resources to combat shame, emptiness, guilt, confusion, then it's a downward spiral. And before we know, we know it, that person has lost, has, ha has the lifestyle that blocks them from any of their dreams. We view television shows on TLC like Hoarders, My 600 Pound Life, just for example, where they often recall their childhood experience and, uh, with shame, emptiness, guilt, confusion from their dealings with that word, sex. This legislation's primary focus it's not about the birds and the bees. It's about equipping our children with age-appropriate conversations on how they can be empowered within themselves. These standards are not being mandated by us. It's being constructed by those that we can trust. It says right in the legislation on page 14, the State Board of Education in consultation with youth, parents, sexual health and violence prevention experts, 
healthcare providers, advocates, and education practitioners, including but not limited to administrators, regional superintendents of schools, teachers, and school support personnel shall develop and adopt rigorous learning standards in the area of comprehensive personal health and safety education for pupils in kindergarten through the fifth grade and, and comprehensive sex and health and education for pupils in the sixth to twelfth grade, including but not limited to all of the national sex education standards, including information on consent, and healthy relationships, anatomy and physiology, puberty and adolescent sexual development, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation and identity, sexual health, and interpersonal violence, as authored by the Future of Sex Education Initiative. As the national sex education standards are updated, the State Board of Education shall update these standards as well. No matter how some of these words I just mentioned may make some of us feel, there are many young people dealing with the, those feelings within, and they need to know that they are supported with age-appropriate resources and knowledge that can release them from their shame, fill their emptiness, and take away their guilt, and provide power to combat their confusion. I urge and I vote. Representative Cassidy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the bill. Uh, to one of the previous speakers who uh, talked about whether or not a teacher could handle complex subjects in a classroom of 30 kids, I couldn't agree more. Geometry, algebra, some of the more complex classics require a lot of attention to detail. And many of us on this side of the aisle have worked really hard to ensure that they have adequate funding to have smaller class sizes. This is not a question of whether or not this should be taught in schools. For far too long, LGBTQ youth were either invisible or expressly stigmatized, and I remember that. It burned into my soul, I remember that. Sexual health education. Senate Bill 818 is a long overdue update so that all students in Illinois have access to the information and skills they need to make informed decisions that keep them safe and healthy. LGBTQ inclusive sex education is related to lower reports of adverse mental health, suicidal thoughts, and suicide plan suicidal plans among all youth and, of ex and experiences of bullying among sexual minority youth. In fact, according to the 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Study conducted by the CDC annually, youth who identified as lesbian, gay, or bisexual experienced bullying at almost double the rate of heterosexual youth. And as a kid who didn't understand why I didn't fit in, who couldn't define why I felt different, and whose parents were not an option to go to, I wish I had had a teacher I could turn to. I wish I had had a curriculum that didn't call me unnatural. Vote oh, yes. Representative Crespo. Thank you, thank you Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? She indicates she'll yield. Representative, how, how, how many other states out there actually use the national sex education standards to align their curriculum? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I believe that there are two. Washington and Colorado. Do you know what standards they're using? Are they using the new standards? Again, I'm not sure. So, so they're using the, the old standards, 2012. So there's a body of work out there that we can look at and, and get a sense of those standards, what type of product they will produce. The new standards were adopted, if I'm correct, uh, in March of 2020, a little bit over a year ago. No other state has used those standards to uh, put together the curriculum. And, and 
So just for the record, there's only two states. They're using the 2012 standards, not the 2020 standards. No other, no other state is using the new standards. Mm -hmm. Now, to the, to, to the bill. And I voted for this in committee with the understanding that I would do some more research. I want to thank the advocates that got me some information, and, and they took the time to talk to me. And one of the questions that I asked, based on a statement that they made, was that uh, there was no evidence out there that this would uh, increase sexual activity. I'm not taking an issue with, or if it doesn't, but they haven't been able to give me any evidence that it does not. Um, now, I've struggled with this. I can only speak as a parent who raised two daughters with my wife. When I was growing up as a kid, back like in 1898, things were different. <laughs> when my girls were growing up, and they're 32 and 34, things were different then. And things are different today. And, and I do honestly believe that we need to teach sex ed in the schools. And I honestly believe that we need to take into account things that we know today that we didn't know in the past. But here's what I struggle with. And, and folks have been talking about this book. I haven't seen this book yet. I think I'm actually afraid of seeing this book now. But one thing is certain. They're saying this is bad. And what I've heard on this side are folks saying, oh, we don't have to use that book, implying that maybe it's not a good book. But it bothers me that these standards can actually come up with that kind of product. That bothers me a bit. The thing, Representative, that bothers me the most is that I know it's permissive, but we're telling schools that if you don't use these standards, you cannot teach sex ed. That concerns me a bit, because I think we do need sex ed at, at our schools. I also believe that we need to take into account things that we know today. And as of right now, I still don't know what I'm going to do. But I'll, list, I'll, list, I'll continue to listen to, to, to the debate. Uh, but again, I'm very concerned that if school districts look at the new curriculum, that we don't know what it's going to look like, and they say, this is a bridge too far, we can't do that, that we will end up with no sex ed at all. Thank you for your work. I want to thank the advocates again for taking their time and meeting with me, and uh, I'll continue listening to the debate. Thank you, Speaker. Representative Evans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the bill. This bill is about keeping our young people safe and healthy by giving them the information to make good decisions and protect themselves. We've already addressed that it's age appropriate. This means that the information is given when students are able to understand it. We've already addressed that. This is because this bill is about arming our students with the information and skills from trusted sources to make healthy and informed decisions. Now, this is the key right here. If we don't provide this information to our students, and let's be crystal clear, many of our, my friends on the other side of the aisle would like to live in a world that they would like to live in, and I would too. I would like to live in a world where we could talk about storks and, and dropping a baby off and sunny days and wonderful things. I would like to live in that world. I'm a father now, and I would like to tell my son all of the stories and, and lies in which my grandmother told me about where kids come from. I would like to live in that world. And some of you all would like to live in a world that I wouldn't like to live in. But I'll tell you, they will find the information, whether it's accurate or not. We live in a technology society. We can't vote for data centers and internet and Amazon, but want to live in the past. It's not our option to decide. This bill is not an all or nothing approach. We're going to arm our teachers and we're going to listen to them. This bill gives teachers the opportunity to build on those lessons with clear guidance from the standards to make sure that they're inclusive to all students in Illinois and cover the full range of topics we know our students need to learn to stay safe and healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish. It took my grandfather a while to stop using his 8-tracks, but he moved on to CDs and now he's on to streaming. It's the rally of life that we must move forward. My son's three years old and he's going to be on the internet. I want him to be prepared and informed. It's the reality of life we live in. Stand strong, Representative Lilly asks you to support this legislation. Senator Willis. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the sponsor yield? The indicate she'll yield. Representative, thank you so much. You and I had similar bills that we worked on that went hand in hand. And by the request of many members of this body and the committee, we decided to blend the two bills together. And this is the result of that. I think the most important thing to point out to this is that this made it a, um, a non-mandate. And, and what it did was it put some clear standards in there for those schools that are going to teach sex ed to make sure that they do it appropriately. So I'm going to go over some key points with that just to help stress to the body. And hopefully you can clarify this along with me. Does this bill create standards to teach students about personal health and safety in an age appropriate manner on topics that are on similar topics like that from kindergarten to fifth grade? Yes. In younger grades, like K through two, is the focus more on personal safety and what it means to be a good friend and how to talk to adults or parents about something that makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe? Yes, Representative. In grades three through five, does the instruction mostly look at covering healthy relationships and safety, but it also delves into what a children would be experiencing as their physical, social, and emotional bodies change, specifically going into puberty? Yes. And then as we go older, in sixth through 12th grade, will students continue to focus on those lessons, but also incorporate topics related to sexual health that are age appropriate, stress again, age appropriate, like healthy relationships, digital media safety, and the prevention of STIs and unintended pregnancies? That is correct, yes. Do the standards still discuss and promote abstinence? Yes, young people have all the appropriate age information to make sure they can make the best decision possible, including abstinence. Is it true that decades of research has proven comprehensive personal health and safety and sexual health education to be effective? Yes, as I mentioned before, 30 years of research have shown that this education can be highly effective in supporting positive health outcomes in youth, such as substance abuse prevention, delaying and initiating sex, increasing use of contraceptives and condoms, decreased rate in bullying, increased quality of mental health, decreased gender-based harassment, and decreased interpersonal and dating violence. Thank you. Is it true that sex education can help prevent child sex abuse, create safer school spaces for LGBTQ youth, and increase healthy relationships, reduce relationship violence, improve social emotional learning, and increase meta media literacy? That is correct, yes. Is it also true that the national sex education standards were developed by a wide, wide range of independent experts throughout the fields? Yes. Is it also true that these standards are to prove guidance on the minimum of information needed for age-appropriate sex education in grades K through 12? Yes, Representative. Thank you. Finally, does this bill take away local control from our school districts? Representative, it does not. School districts have local control to determine which curricula to use, who will teach the classes, and how to implement a written opt-out and materials for the community to review and process. Each school will vary in, in, its, in, in its implementation. It depends on the district. Some may present the information at the beginning of the year. Some may hold information sessions for the parents. It depends on the district. Thank you so very much. So finalize to the bill. I cannot stress enough how many people have worked together on this. It is not a mandate. And to some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that say that it should be a parent's job, I agree, it should. But in a perfect world, 
that would be the way it would go. We are not living in a perfect world. Every child does not have a parent that is willing to take the time or has the ability to have those hard discussions. And we do see youth that are getting misinformation. We need to make sure that we have it be the correct and age appropriate information so that we can continue on. I will. And I strongly, strongly urge everybody in this room to look at this as being comprehensive education for healthy and safe relationships for all of our children. I strongly urge an I vote. Thank you. Representative Lilly to close. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this robust debate. Again, SB 818 is about standards. It does not remove local control. It does not require a particular curriculum, lessons, or classrooms. It's about creating standards that all school districts can align with. It's about young people being able to get the information to keep them safe and to keep them healthy. It's about age-appropriate and medically correct information that allow them to use their own skill through education to make sure their lives are whole and safe. Decades of research and information has proven that positive outcomes come from education of the students. We currently have education in our schools. It will continually have educations in the schools. We are expanding it to make sure that there's national standards that, are, that all the curriculum will align with. I do appreciate, again, the debate, and I ask for an I vote. Members, Representative McCombie has requested a verification. All members will be in their chairs and vote their own switches. The question is, shall Senate Bill 818 pass? All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no. The voting is open. Have all voted who wish. Have all voted who wish. Have all voted who wish. Mr. Clerk, take the record. With the vote of 60 voting yes, 48 voting no, zero voting present, Mr. Clerk, please read the names of those voting in the affirmative. A poll of those voting in the affirmative. Representative Ammons. Representative Andrade. Representative Avalar. Representative Buckner. Representative Cassidy. Representative Collins. Representative Conroy. Representative Costa Howard. Representative Croak. Representative Davis. Representative Didich. Representative Evans, Representative Ford, Representative Gable, Representative Gong Gershwitz, Representative Gonzalez, Representative Gordon Booth, Representative Greenwood, Representative Guerrero Cuellar, Representative Cazardi, Representative Halpin, Representative Harper, Representative Harris, Representative Barbara Hernandez, Representative Lisa Hernandez, Representative Hirschauer, Representative Hoffman, Representative Jones, Representative Kifowit, Representative LaPointe, Representative Lilly, Representative Ma, Representative Manley, Representative Mason, Representative Mayfield, Representative Myers Martin, Representative Moeller, Representative Morgan, Representative Musman, Representative Ness, Representative Ortiz, Representative Ramirez, Representative Robinson, Representative Slaughter, Representative Smith, Representative Stava Murray, Representative Stonebeck, Representative Stewart, Representative Tarver, Representative Vela, Representative Walker, 
Representative Walsh. Representative West. Representative Ann Williams. Representative Jawaharial Williams. Representative Willis. Representative Yang War. Representative Yingling. Representative Zaleski. And Mr. Speaker. Representative McCombie. Representative McCombie withdraws for verification. Huh? On this question, there are 60 voting yes, 40 voting no, zero voting present, and this bill, having received the constitutional majority, is hereby declared passed. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.